Hi, in this introduction video I will talk a little bit about different types of entities and how we can uh, remove them if they are given trouble. Um, this is just an introduction, there are more in-depth videos which are part of the same series and they will be made available for paying members of our website. First of all we need to understand that we as human beings may be on the top of the food chain but there are still many things which are feeding off us. Um, there can be all kinds of worms, uh, ticks, mosquitoes, um, bacteria, viruses, they all use us and use our power, our physical body to survive as well. And the same is true for energies. So in the same way as a healthy person uh, does not have to fear much from parasites or disease, in the same way an energetically healthy person is usually not troubled by minor yeah, diseases, minor entities, but when you're in a weakened state or yeah, something has happened to you already, then you become more vulnerable, more susceptible uh, to such problems. Several things which can um, yeah, make a person vulnerable are uh, injury, when a person is just physically harmed, when a person has a low amount of life force because um, they're sick, when a person's life force has been very disturbed because of, for instance, bad environment, bad quality of food, um, or having arguments with other people. All these imbalances also make people vulnerable. Uh, use of drugs is also destabilizing a person's energy body and thus making them very vulnerable to the influence of different entities. So in general, um, if you take good care of yourself, you will find that usually the level of challenge these entities um, yeah, give you can be controlled. Um, entities are always looking for energy and the more energy you provide, the more energies you attract. Um, so there are two traits which cause entities to flock to people. One is having a very powerful energy body, so powerful people tend to attract more attention, not just yeah, from other humans but also from other worlds. Uh, the other thing is um, how easily um, your energy can be taken. So some persons have by nature a very dense, a very solid energy body and all the energy is tied very strongly to their physical body so it cannot be removed very easily. Uh, these people are also generally not very sensitive because the energy is kind of locked into a pattern. Uh, people who have greater energetic sensitivity the energies tend to go in and out of their body, they tend to be more um, yeah, open and being more open to energies also means being more open to spirits, to other entities. So persons with a high sensitivity also are more vulnerable and will attract more spirits and if you have the combination, you have a relatively strong energy and a high sensitivity, then yeah, spirits and entities can be real yeah, hassle or real menace to you. Fortunately not all spirits are evil by nature and actually most are neutral or uh, benevolent. But let's go into the different categories. So one of the uh, categories of spirits which hardly ever bothers people are the elemental spirits. Um, elemental spirits uh, deal with the different yeah, types of energy, earth, water, um, air and fire and in some ways also the planetary powers can also be construed as being elemental forces or elemental powers. Um, in general they're just doing their thing, their earth is creating stability, water and air are creating emotion, awareness, uh, contact um, and fire is creating transformation. 
and in general because they regard themselves as also being lower powers they just want to serve higher power so generally they just uh, attune themselves to the person they're with or the person they're around to support their functioning so in general that is quite normal quite safe it is possible though that for an elemental spirit um, to yeah, get a very different type of instruction and that it follows that part of the instruction instead of the instruction you are giving it so it's kind of a derailed entity which is following a different track than what you are trying to follow and this can be very yeah, problematic um, fortunately it hardly ever happens so it's yeah uh, not a big issue in general if you do have such a problem it's good to find a person who can work with elemental spirits this is a relatively rare trait spiritually speaking uh, but i'm sure you can find somebody so then we get to another uh, category of spirits slightly higher up but also a category which hardly ever creates any problems um, these are the spirits which are basically made of ether of life force in general these are nature spirits um, so you have the spirits which reside within the, uh, the physical objects themselves so the spirits of stones the spirits of trees the spirits of animals and also the caretaker spirits who are living in a region taking care of the flowers of uh, the young of the rivers of the lakes of the seas and um, they themselves see themselves as being supportive by nature and um, they generally don't cause problems as long as they're left alone nature is left alone they're just taking care of everything which exists uh, within their domain uh, however if nature is disturbed somehow by building uh, roads um, um, cutting down forests um, other activities then sometimes these spirits can get grumpy because the way they look at their children the ones they're taking care of are being killed so their habitat is being destroyed and most nature spirits will simply leave because they feel there is no task for them anymore or they will adapt and start taking care of whatever is there in the new environment even if the forest is gone and it turns into city well then they will take care of the city but some nature spirits have a strong attachment um, and out of this attachment um, yeah they can uh, yeah get frustration and out of frustration can come anger so it is possible that these spirits become angry more often they will simply become afraid because they see humans as an unstoppable plague which is just eroding um, their world and sometimes they get angry and the angry ones might strike back at people um, they can be quite dangerous um, from there for them the world exists of energy exists of life force and um, for them controlling and working with life force is what they've been doing for all their existence and um, if they get angry they can also really disrupt life force uh, which means they can make uh, people sick they can make people weak they can kill people um, so they can be quite aggressive generally though their aggression is not focused on one individual uh, generally it's an aggression more towards humanity because they see humanity as the plague um, so often they will just strike at humans who come within their range and not focus on one target to kill them off but it's more like a blind rage they just strike out at people in general and uh, in this way they are just causing harm to people but often it is more of a chance effect you will get uh, harmed a certain evening and the spirit will most likely move on to other targets because it is simply trying to drive away the humans from the 
forest they're protecting or the, the rocks or the trees or whatever it is they feel their attachment to. Uh, depending on the complexity of the spirit they're more or less dangerous. Like a little flower fairy it's not a very dangerous power. It will not be able to cause much harm. But if you have an angry elf they can be very dangerous to people. So the third type of spirit is actually the most yeah, the common one. Um, they're spirits of the, of the astral world. And um, these types of spirits come in many, many flavors, you could say. How things are going in our world is we are in a way living in a small dimension. Uh, a small layer of the entire cosmos is what we can perceive. It's kind of like our layer of existence. And there's many mentions below where yeah, beings which we would call evil spirits, dark spirits, demons uh, live and exist. And there are higher dimensions. And in these higher dimensions is where we would yeah, place our guides, uh, gods, goddesses and angels. So the spirits of the higher astral worlds, they generally don't cause many problems for us. Um, they live in higher realities and they often have very little desire to descend uh, to our more primitive, more limiting reality. Uh, it is like if you can have a better existence, why would you yeah, bother with, yeah, with doing something like this? So I can reach that level of awareness and can maintain myself there. And to do that, I need to live according to certain rules. I yeah, should yeah, lead a very uh, blessed life, following the advice of the gods, not uh, tainting my own energy, not disrupting my own energy, uh, so refraining from sin. Uh, and this way my energy body can rise by regular prayer and meditation. You can imagine that most people don't manage to do this and for spirits which are coming from the lower astral they even have less self-discipline than we humans do. So instead of spending their lives in contemplation and meditation of these higher beings they call humans um, they are just grabbing and pulling at them just the way we are doing when, yeah, in general, we are praying or focusing on higher powers. Um, and for us, we have, of course, the different, many different gods and many different angels. And each of them has a different aspect, a different energy. Some are more protective, some are offering us wisdom, others are offering us health. And we tend to look for the higher power which can give us what we want, what we need. And these spirits from the lower astral, they do the same. But they feed on energies which we consider lower energies. So they feed on fear, they feed on anger, they feed on pain. And um, they want to get fed. Um, so, in the most positive sense, you could say like, oh, if I have pain or anger or sadness, this spirit will come and take away all these heavy energies from me and I will be purified by it, by it. So, in the same way as a leech, it just sucks out the poison and then it leaves you better. And they work in this way. But when they have fed, then they have two options. Either they let go, the leech drops off the body and uh, goes looking for a next meal when it goes hungry again or, like a virus, it tries to stimulate the host to generate more food. And this is when entities become problematic. If they just absorb the lower energies around us and are nurtured by it and let go, then we're actually helped by them, we're purified by them kind of like the healthy bacteria in our intestines. They help us to deal with the things we cannot deal with, to uh, transmute the things we cannot transmute. 
but the entities which are more uh, trying to use us as a continual source of food, they're in a way farming us. In the same way as we are in a way um, treating cows and uh, pigs and chickens, um, we put them in yeah, horrible circumstances, make them suffer. Why? Because we want to get cheap food out of them. We want to get cheap chicken meat, cheap pork, uh, cheap beef. And this is why we yeah, keep them under horrible conditions, which are very unnatural, pump them full of chemicals and growth hormones and give them very boring, uh, monotonous food, which creates many diseases. So we can have cheap food. And in the same way as we are treating yeah, the animals around us, we are being treated by the energies of these lower entities. So in many ways, we may think that we're on a higher level of awareness, but our behavior isn't, unfortunately. And also because we are behaving in such a way, we are attracting spirits which are similar of the, in nature. So it is always so that an energy attracts a similar energy. And by, in a way, being very parasitical beings ourselves in how we treat uh, the animals around us and the nature around us, we also attract uh, parasitical beings, uh, not so much on an individual level, but more as a, on a planetary level, as a race level, that these entities become more and more frequent uh, than they used to be in previous ages because our behavior as humanity was not as bad in previous ages. So, how do they farm us? What happens is that an entity will approach us and they will be attracted by us by having both a weakness and available energies. And if we have a lack of control, of self-control, then such an entity can try to control us to make us angry, to make us afraid, to make us feel pain, uh, to make us depressed, um, so that we will generate food for it. And um, that it is also creating suffering by trying to get cheap food. Well, that's just an unfortunate side effect. Usually their goal is not to make humans suffer. Their goal is to feed. And the same way we as humans, when we go to the supermarket and we buy cheap chicken, it is not our goal to torture chickens. It is our goal to get cheap food. But the way to get very cheap food, unfortunately, also entails a lot of suffering. And it's the same way with entities. They don't have that awareness to buy, like most humans buy, uh, don't have the awareness to buy biological food or organic food. Um, in, in the same way these entities also don't have the awareness that they can actually coexist with humans in a very symbiotic relationship, but rather move towards a parasitical relationship. So an entity itself can be taught to coexist with us, it, just like a human can be educated. Um, it takes quite some time though, and eventually by absorbing higher and higher energies, also the awareness of the spirit will grow and it will evolve eventually to a human level. So by feeding on us, it is also growing. Um, if you don't want it to feed on you, or at least not to manipulate you, you can also try to remove such a spirit. And uh, the tricky thing is that there are a lot of pieces of advice or techniques um, which have a counter which are very counterintuitive and also not very productive because they end up prolonging the, the issue. So for instance one of the advices I heard is that well if an entity bothers you then get really angry at it and if you're really angry at it and yell at it and tell it to go away, it will go away. Yes, this is true, but it will probably go away also because it is completely bloated. It's fed by your anger and once it has 
eaten its fill, absorbed all the anger you generated, it will be back for more. And people have the idea that it is working because every time they send the spirit away they have peace for two or three weeks or even a month uh, until the spirits come back for more. Um, so these patterns of generating low energies uh, they can help if you're trying to feed the spirits and hope that by feeding them regularly they will be content and leave you alone. But um, yeah, just like having a pet, uh, the pet will be happy as long as you feed it regularly. And yeah, if it needs more food or wants more attention or more of something, it will start bothering you again. So you can have a kind of a pet spirit that way and keep the problems on a low level. But ultimately it is not a solution, you're not getting rid of the problem, you're not getting rid of the entities. Um, another class of beings, which can be problematic on a completely different level, are the dead people. So, dead people don't bother the living in general. And dead people in general move on. And their energy bodies in a way disintegrate so they have to move on to higher levels of the astral from where they have very little inclination to come back down to us. Uh, but sometimes a person uh, has a lot of attachment or a lot of fear from moving on. This can be a fear of their own karma or it can be an attachment to yeah, earthly pleasures, earthly delights, earthly sensations. And to maintain their energy bodies, they need similar energies. So they will actually prey on the living. And these can be quite problematic spirits. Uh, because they are not stupid, silly and blind like the spirits which are from the lower levels. But they have a human level of intelligence. And they can understand what is going on, what you're trying to do if you're trying to get rid of them. They can understand what you're trying to do. If you're, for instance, calling somebody to yeah, get professional help. And in general, they will also try to sabotage your efforts to get rid of them. You will lose the card of the person who is cleaning the house. You will forget about it because you will get distracted. And in this way, they try to maintain their hold over you as long as possible. And if you find that there is a lot more... Um, yeah, subtle distractions happening uh, rather than the gross uh, emotional distractions then often you have a higher level of spirit which is bothering you rather than a spirit from the lower astral. The spirits from the lower astral can usually be sent back to their yeah, normal place of residence by simply taking away the higher energies and then they are sucked back to their own levels. Uh, these other spirits, they belong on the same level as us. So there is no easy sending away of these types of spirits. Um, usually they can be reasoned with, because they are, yeah, just like humans, uh, quite reasonable people. And usually if you can help them to get what they need or what they want, uh, for them to be able to move on to their either a higher layer of the astral or even to their next incarnation, uh, they can be persuaded to leave. Uh, you can also invite higher spirits, um, like death angels for instance, to take care of them and to help them to move on. So, I hope that this overview has given you a little bit of an idea of the types of spirits which can uh, create problems and in the next videos I will uh, give a demonstration on how to perform a healing, how to remove an entity from a person's body and also on different yeah, uh, precautions uh, you should take when trying to deal with spirits. Uh, these spirits will, uh, will generally be very um, challenging if they're of a human level so it's not possible to give completely exhaustive uh, advice but I will do my best in the next two videos to go a little bit more deeply into the subject 
and uh, this video is a free introduction. The other videos will be on the website for paying members. Thank you for your attention.